Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, if this is your first time here, welcome. I'm Avon Van Hassel. I'm a self-published author, and I mostly write fairy tale retellings. My books are available on Amazon for ebook and paperback. Coming to you this evening because I had a little idea that I thought might be some fun to play with. There's a trend on YouTube, and I'm very late to the party because I'm habitually late to every party. It's just, it takes me a while to like catch on to trends. And um, it's the crossover between true crime and makeup YouTubers. And I'm obsessed with it. I knew I would be, which is probably why it took me so long to get into it because I just, I'm resistant to things that make me happy and I don't know why. Anyway, um, I love true crime and I love makeup but I'm not a makeup artist and I don't have the time to devote to true crime research and writing and filming and all of that on top of everything else that I have to do. But one thing I do enjoy quite a lot is skincare and I do eventually have to take off all of this so I do actually have a pretty consistent skincare routine. So I figured why not film it and tell you guys a little story while I'm getting ready for bed and I thought maybe you guys might want to do your evening skincare routine with me thought that would be fun um I'm not gonna do I'm not gonna do a true crime story not tonight anyway I may at some point right now I'm gonna stick to fairy tales because that's what I do so tonight I'm going to tell you the story of Jack and the Beanstalk um which is the basis of my first novel, Magic Beans. And I'm going to take off my makeup, which might be funny, might be less funny than other times when I do this. And if you guys like it, let me know. And I can certainly do more because I'm going to be cleaning my face anyway. I might as well be telling a story while I'm at it. All right. So if you're sitting comfortably, Let's begin. Also, do disregard whatever you see in the background. I'm in the middle of switching my wardrobe out over, so it's kind of... I'm also doing my laundry because I'm a functioning adult. So naturally, I started it three days ago and I still haven't finished. So, um, I don't know if you guys want me to do, like, products listed in the comment in the description. I feel like I should for like reasons, but I'm not really, it's not that kind of a video. But anyway, um, I guess I will this time. And then if you guys don't care for it, then we can just, I guess I'll, I'll talk about the products this time. And then if we don't like it, then I'll just put them in the description box without context or without a preamble later but I figured just I might as well film it right and then I can always cut it out later if I don't like it all right first thing I'm gonna do and I'm actually not endorsing this product because it is not cruelty free which I found out later but I do really like it and there is a sort of zero waste minimalism side to me that really hates buying a product and then throwing away a perfectly good product so I bought it. It's cheap. It works really well, but it's not cruelty free. They do test on animals and that is Pond's Cold Cream, which I bought it because it's a classic, right? Pond's is a recognizable brand that's been around since like friggin' 1910 or something. Who knows? Forever. Anyway, it's really, really good. You can see I've used hardly none of it and I've been using it for ages. Anyway. So that's my cold cream. I'm going to use that to melt all of my makeup off. Urban Hydration Peach and Papaya Micellar Water, which uh, I got on Ulta, and it is a black-owned, woman-owned small business. And also, this is like 16 ounces for like $11, so that's insane. I use a bit of just herbivore hydration water. I've got a, an eye serum from Beekman 1802, just a couple of little samples because, you know, you get samples and you want to use them. Jamaican black castor oil, 
on my eyelashes. I also have greasy, gross, Grande Lash uh, eyelash serum on my eyelashes. On nights where I, or on days when I wear a lot of makeup, I like to use a sleeping mask, and so I'm going to be using the Laneige sleeping mask. Also, Laneige is kind of a gray area in terms of cruelty free because I think they sell in China. Last I heard, they sold in China. Shea Moisture, obviously, is a black owned um, and woman owned company. Herbivore, I don't know anything about, but Beekman 1802 is not only cruelty free but they do use sustainable packaging. So expensive. Oh, also fun fact, they are the suppliers for Rose Apothecary if you are a Schitt's Creek fan. So just throwing that out there if it matters. Uh, I also use uh, reusable cotton rounds. This is the vintage lemon um, design from I use the Zero Waste Store. I don't remember what the brand is, but they are just little squares of cotton that are printed with lemons and they're very absorbent and I love them. So that's the products. Let's get into the story. All right, so Jack and his mother live on a farm and the uh, Grimm's brothers were collecting their store. Well, actually, Jack and the Beanstalk is Joseph Jacobs. He's not a Grimm's story. So the Grimm's brothers were collecting their stories in like the 1820s, I think. So the stories, I like to assume, happened well before that because they'd already passed into legend at that point. So I have to assume, therefore, um, that the reason Jack and his mother live alone on this farm is because as happened with a lot of Europe at the time, around the time of the uh, Napoleonic Wars, etc. Um, a lot of, there was a lot of conflict in Europe and a lot of wars and things and a lot of the men um, had just died and they had left their farms and their families um, without the help of uh, male family members. And so then you had a lot of situations where you have women and children on farms alone uh, to take care of the farms on their own. And a lot of times the women and children would be involved in the farming and therefore perfectly capable of running a farm on their own. But a lot of times they just simply weren't. So you had a lot of, this is a, a situation that a lot of women and children, widows and orphans, etc., would have found themselves in, and therefore a realistic place to start a story that would have felt, um, if not universal, then at least recognizable to a lot of people. So, anyway, so we start off with Jack. Jack and his mother live alone on this farm, and, um, they're running out of money quick. Presumably, the father slash husband slash male caretaker uh, had died recently enough that they hadn't quite figured out how to be self-sufficient yet, but long enough ago that they were running out of money. Um, I don't want you to do this because I <laughs> ate my lipstick off a long time ago. Um, and so this is why I like to follow the cold cream with a micellar water, because it comes right off. Um, so anyway, Jack and his mother are quickly, quickly running out of money. And pretty much all they have left is the cow, the milk cow. And she's old. She's dried up. Now this is, this took a lot of research for me, because it turns out, that a milk cow doesn't really just dry up. Like, obviously dairy cows are kind of kept more or less pregnant and lactating artificially, meaning they're allowed to continue getting pregnant and then usually having their calves taken away from them for the purposes of getting them pregnant again. It's very inhumane, the dairy industry. But at least from what I've heard, it's very inhumane in that way, just keeping cows pregnant forever. 
Um, what are you doing? Um, anyway, that they don't just dry up from old age. Pretty much from my research at the time, which was like 2014, it was forever ago. Um, pretty much the best way to dry up a milk cow is to give her mastitis. So, the poor cow wasn't just old. She was sick. So, and I should say, just to brag a little bit, in my original writing group, one of my partners was a vet, and she said that my description of bovine mastitis was very accurate. A little proud of that, not gonna lie. So, poor milk cow, all dried up. So, at the end of that tether, Jack's mother, who was not given a name in the original as far as I know, tells Jack, take this cow, our last asset, go to town, which, I remember, back in the day they didn't have standing markets, they had market days, when people used to come in from wherever they lived, and there'd be big market, and it'd be like a festival, right? So, take the cow to market, sell it for as much as you can, and then bring it back here. But really try to sell it for a lot, because we're starving here. <laughs> we're starving, bro. So, so Jack says, okay, and he wants to be the man of the house. He wants to be, he wants to prove to his mother that he's going to take care of them and he's going to take it seriously and it's going to be grand. So he takes the cow who I want to call Helga so bad because in my book, she's called Helga, but in the story, she's not given a name. So he takes the cow. And on the way to market, because market, t not every town has a market, like the town. Villages don't have markets. Towns have markets. And um, so he has to go to the nearest town and sell the poor cow. But on the way, because it's a little distance away, because market towns, you know, are centrally located a lot of times to a number of villages, he stops in a tavern or an inn or whatever, some sort of eatery, and he stops for a little bit of rest and to get a little bit of food. And of course he doesn't have much money, so he's really just, really just there to rest. And he's approached by a mysterious figure, who I always imagined in the original stories, this original figure, mysterious figure, would have been, um, kind of on the older side, kind of a wizened wizard sort. And originally, my original plan for Alois was that he was going to be an old kind of um, Yen Sid, who was the sorcerer in The Sorcerer's Apprentice, the, you know, the Mickey cartoon with the dancing mops. Anyway, he was going to be that kind of a type. But in the end, I was like, no, wouldn't it be funnier? Yeah. So, um, what are you doing? And then for moisturizer, I'm using the 4th Ray ColourPop um, Acai eh, Face Milk. Okay, so then the stranger says, Hey, I see you've got an old milk cow. I would love to buy your cow. And in exchange, I will give you this bag of magic beans. And the boy, Jack goes, oh boy, oh boy, because, you know, he's starving. And also, it's implied that he's pretty young. So, presumably, there's a low enough crime rate that his mother trusts sending him all the way to a town that's far away that he needs a break in the middle of traveling. But, not so dangerous if she wants to go with him. But also, the crime rate has to be high enough for her to want to stay home and guard the property. I don't know. Anyway, we're looking too far into the motives here. It's just a fairy tale. Anyway, so he says, sure, because we're starving. And you know, who knows how much I can sell this cow for? Who knows if I can get any money at all for this cow? And then who knows what we can buy with the cow afterwards? I mean, this is, you know, 
a bird in the hand, as it were, or beans in the hand. So he takes the beans back to his mother and he says, look, I sold the cow. And she says, great, how much did you sell it for? And he said, look, magic beans. And she says, magic beans. And she takes the bag and in her rage, she throws them out the window and they go to bed hungry. Well, in the middle of the night, do you mind? Hey, thank you. Rude. In the middle of the night, Jack gets up. He can't sleep. He's overcome with guilt. He's just so nervous about the future. So he gets up and he goes into the kitchen and he sees something moving outside the window. And he looks up and he sees that the beanstalk has sprouted overnight. And it's now this huge, sorry, the beans have sprouted overnight. And now it's this huge beanstalk. By the way, I am actually going to use a lip scrub. I wasn't going to, but I am going to. This is Galaxy by Lush. I'm going to use my little lip brush too because I love it. I don't know where it went though. What did I do with it? It's in my hand, dumbass. Okay. So. Um, and he just thinks, wow, that's the most magnificent thing. Now, the story isn't always clear about why he climbs the beanstalk. On the one hand, you're like, well, he's a little boy. He's looking for adventure, right? I think he was looking, he was thinking, you know, when beans grow big, you know, there are beans up there. So he had to bring something back to his mother, right? And to prove that it wasn't a mistake and that they were magic. I mean, obviously they were magic. This thing grew overnight. That's not how agriculture works. So, climbs a beanstalk. And in the original versions of this story, the climb is a lot shorter than my climb. Which, he's a little boy. It's going to take him a long time. Plus, we don't know what his... We don't know if he's a good climber. But he climbs a beanstalk. And up at the top... On the other side of a cloud, he sees, to his surprise, there's a big house. Sometimes it's a castle. Sometimes it's a house. I think it's usually a castle. And he's like, wow. And at this point, it's pretty much implied that this is now an adventure. And he's not really being pragmatic about this. So he runs into the house. And he thinks, actually, this house is a lot bigger than it. The castle is a lot bigger than it looked from the ground. And he goes in. And... Pretty quickly, he susses. A giant lives here. So, giants are known to eat little boys. But, the giant's castle is full of fantastical things. So, what is little Jack to do? Well, the first thing, he runs into the giant's wife, who's also a giant. I don't know why that detail is always missed out. But for some reason it is. Anyway, he runs into the giant's wife, who's also a giant. And she is kind. And she gives him bread and butter. And she says, but you have to get out because my husband is going to come back and he's going to eat you. Because he does not like humans. So Jack's like, okay, okay. I don't want to be here for that. So he runs. But, and then, just as the wife is saying that, the giant, her husband, walks into the room. He stomps into the room. He doesn't see Jack, by the way. He just stomps into the room. And he says, fee fi fo fum What? I smell the blood of a British man. I don't know why. I mean, because Jacobs was English, so that makes sense. I think he was English. Certainly British. Pretty sure he was English. Um, be he alive or be he dead, I'll grind his bones to make my bread. Now this is obviously an empty threat because I doubt the giant makes his own bread or grinds his own bones. So Jack, you know, being a child and being raised on these sorts of stories doesn't really want to take the chance. So he runs for it, but before he gets out, he sees, I just put castor oil in my eyeball, it's fine. Before he runs out, he sees a bag of gold and he grabs it and he keeps running. 
He runs all the way down the beanstalk and all the way back to his home. And he shows his mother the bean, the gold. And she says, oh, we got to keep this secret. We got to keep this secret. And then we got to chop down that beanstalk because it's nothing but problems. And he was like, yeah, we got to do that. But then they don't for reasons. And um, so the next night, Jack says, well, you know, I did get that gold. So maybe there's something else up the beanstalk that's kind of interesting. So the next night, he climbs the beanstalk again. This kid has got to have amazing upper body strength because I do like 10 minutes of work in the garden, which is all just ground level, and I can't move for three days. Will you please stop? So he avoids even the giant's wife because he doesn't think he should announce his presence. And uh, he just kind of goes like skulking around to see what else the giant has. And he finds the most magnificent creature. He finds a goose that lays a golden egg. This goose is in a cage and it's got a golden egg with it. Yes, darling. Finish your dinner. Oh my gosh. I'll let you out in a minute as soon as I finish telling the story. She has to live in here at dinner time because she's on prescription food and she wants to eat her sister's food. But her sister's food makes her sick. She also really super hates it when I sit at my desk. So part of this is let me out and part of this is pay attention to me. Anyway. So he finds the goose that's got this golden egg and he's like, this is amazing. That egg has got to be worth a lot of money on the goose that makes the egg has got to be worth a lot of money. Plus, it's like a golden egg factory, right? So, he steals the goose. And he goes back down the beanstalk. And that's not easy, because that goose is heavy as shit. Because it's a, it's a, it's a goose. It's a whole... I don't know if you've ever seen a goose, but... They're big. I know. They're not like chicken size. They're like double a chicken size. And they're heavy and muscular. So, he... And now his mom's starting to panic, right? Because, obviously, this thing's a game changer. But, that thing's gonna draw attention. And people are gonna start wondering where they're getting these golden eggshells, right? So she's like, for real, we gotta cut that thing down. And he's like, yeah, but, mom. And she's like, I know, but, you know. So, one last time, he goes up the beanstalk. One last time. And this last time, he goes into the giant's treasure room and he sees the most magnificent harp. And this harp is, it's a harp. And some versions, the harp has a, um, a column, I think it's called. The front of it is shaped like a woman and she is sentient and she has the arms and sometimes the wings, you know, like the Disney version, I think, has angel wings. And sometimes it's just a harp that plays itself. And sometimes the harp actually sings like with a human voice so anyway it's a fantastical harp and he's like i have to have that so he picks it up and he starts running but the giant catches him and the giant screams um you know fee fry fo fum and all that so he chases after him and uh, jack runs and he runs back for the beanstalk and he jumps and he climbs all the way back down and he's screaming at his mother and she's finally took her three days to find an axe because they're not self-sufficient on this farm, or this story would have ended a long time ago. So she grabs an axe, and she cuts down the beanstalk, and the giant falls to his death. I don't like that ending. Because the giant was just protecting his property, and technically, he threatened, but... He never actually did anything, and the giantess... The giant's wife, I mean, she said all that stuff about, you know, he's actually going to grind you up, but she was pretty nice. So I feel like there's a chance that either she would have protected Jack, or she would have talked her husband out of violence, or maybe he wasn't actually violent, and she was just like, kid, you gotta get out of here. You know? So, I changed some details in my version. Um, because... Some of these details don't sit well with me. 
But for those of you who haven't read my books and haven't heard of my books, the main detail that I changed was that my story is not about Jack. It's about the man who sold the magic beans to Jack. Because, in my opinion, Jack is the least interesting character in the story. He was just a little boy. He was just a poor little farm kid with a sick cow. And he did what any of us would do. He traded the cow for a sure thing, which in this case was beans, which are food. And then there was a magic beanstalk, which means technically it was a good trade. They were magic beans. And then he climbed the beanstalk because... Honestly, because boys, because I would not have climbed the beanstalk. I would have just waited for the beans at the bottom of the stalk to grow. But I don't know what I would have done when I was 10, to be honest with you. I might have climbed the beanstalk. I don't think so, though. I was pretty low energy at 10. Anyway, and then when you're starving and you're desperate and you literally sold the last asset you had. I mean, it's understandable that you might steal some coins and then you see things like that goose. And then, well, the harp. That's the subject of my second book, Golden. The harp might not just be a harp. At which point, it's kind of a rescue mission. You're kind of a hero. So, there's some gray areas in this story. And I just, I thought those were so much more interesting than Jack. So... I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Uh, I enjoyed making it more than I thought I would. Maybe next time, um, if I'm doing this on a day two hair day and not wash day, I'll do my hair routine that I do before bed also. And uh, But for now, this was actually pretty fun. I actually did enjoy it quite a bit, so I hope you guys did too. Um, I'm thinking about moving my um, regular just talk about whatever day to Monday and then having these be on Wednesday I don't know I'm still working on what the schedule is going to be with all these new ideas that I have so anyway if you like this video give it a like thumb there they are um if you thought it was interesting or funny and you like watching me smear mascara all over my face um share it with a friend leave a comment. Are there any other fairy tales that you'd like to hear me tell before I climb in bed for the evening? And um, be sure to subscribe so that you know when either my regular writing stuff is up or another one of these is up or whatever the next crazy idea I have is. And uh, catch me on Facebook and Instagram. And I think that's about it. So good night. Sleep well. Take care of your skin. And uh, I will see you later. Bye-bye.